just like everybody else, we're here at 7-Eleven for some fast food. Quick and convenient, easy food. Wow, now that is abundance. Hey everybody, my name is Yara Willard and today I want to talk to you about one of the most nutrient dense superfoods on the planet. Pine pollen! Whoa, it's pine season and the pollen is ready to go. So, join me as we learn about how to identify this plant, different ways to use it, ways in which we can make it into medicine, and all kinds of other fun and interesting facts about pine and the pollen. Come along! So where do we find pine? Now in the part of the world that I live in, most of them are actually planted in people's yards. So it's a bit of an urban forage, or we can look into park areas where we might find all different kinds. This one here is called shore pine, and it's also known as lodgepole pine. It's one of the first ones to bloom. It's got a little less pollen in it than the white pine, which is the other predominant species in the area, but it is one of those easy to harvest. Often you'll see it in areas like this in urban landscapes where people have used it for decoration. And yet this is one of the most nutrient things we have. So I like these ones because they're quick and easy to harvest and they're all at low levels where you got lots and lots of pollen to go from. How do we pick this plant? Now because I want to be really nimble with both my hands, it's best to have some kind of container in which I can not have to hold on to. So I have a bag here and I can put this into it and hold it like that or I can just take my bowl and stick it right in the tree like this, wow, and then pick into it. When we're picking pine pollen, we want to pick the male catkins. They're the parts like this that release all of the pollen. It's easy to just grab them from the base and pull them up, either pull them right off the stem or we can take another option of snipping the whole top off like so. Previously I used to put a paper bag around them and bang the paper bag in order to pull all the pollen off so I could come back to the same tree but it's so abundant that I realized it's a much faster technique to just grab them and pull. The other thing about it is that as these dry out, they'll start to release more pollen. So if we let them sit for a day or two, we'll get about twice as much pollen as we would have if we just banged them out the first time. We're gonna harvest a whole bunch of these up the stems like so, and bring them home with us. Now if you've got ones that are not quite ready, but you know they're gonna open up when you get home, you can always just snap those off. Like so. That's a fully, not quite mature pine pollen, but it's gonna open up within a day. By the time we get it home and start drying it, there's lots of pollen in there. That's an easy way to do it. Now it doesn't take long to harvest quite a few of these. If you, once you get both your hands going, you get pretty industrious here. Wow, wow. Now why does the pine tree produce so much pollen? Part of it is uh, a quite excessive, and it's not just for its own fertilization, which is the main purpose, but it's also to give a deep nourishing bath of pollen to the whole forest. So a large pine forest can produce over a million tons of pollen in one season. Can you imagine that? That's a lot of pollen. This superfood alone, if we were to live off of this for the two weeks that it's in season, it'd be a full regenerative detoxification cleanse for the body that's gonna uplift and bring us to a higher level of nutrient function. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna harvest enough to be able to start eating this and have this for a longer period of time. Now as a food, this is a very strong nutrient. It is chock full of minerals and vitamins as well as full complete protein and lots of essential fatty acids as well as a ton of antioxidants and flavonoid groups and steroidal building blocks. Some of the antioxidants and bioflavonoid groups that are really potent and important to note are things like resveratrol, which we call reverse it all because that's kind of what it does in the body. It reverses all kinds of oxidative damage. Things like MSM, which is an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory sulfur-based compound that'll help with joint inflammation and other kinds of inflammatory conditions in the body, as well as SOD, which is superoxide dismutase. This is a free radical scavenger that helps with our organ systems, but also works with repairing our DNA and DNA structure, which is something I think is really important right now, especially as we move into an age of pollution, where we have a need for more resiliency on this planet. We have a lot of toxic compounds, including radioactive isotopes, heavy metals, 
various toxins that need to be pulled out of our body, and pine pollen is one of the best things to help do that. Pine pollen has glutathione in it, which helps get our detoxification channels working so we can flow and move those toxins out of our body. Other compounds it has are things like quercetin, which is helpful for anti-allergy. Now, some people have allergies to pollens. Often, the pollens themselves can be the antidote to the allergy to pollens. Go figure. This is kind of what we call a doctrine of correspondence. Being that it's a male part of the plant, it's got what are called androgens, and androgens are building blocks for testosterone. It has a bio-mimicking testosterone in it. One thing I wanted to share that I was thinking about last night is that the pine itself right now is under siege. All through Canada, one of the worst epidemics of the forest that we know of is happening. It's called the pine beetle, and it is devastating massive amounts of land full of pine forests. Now, this as a correspondence reminds me of how pine pollen is helping us fight a devastation on our hormone levels, which is xenoestrogen imbalance. We are being bombarded by thousands of different forms of xenoestrogens, mycoestrogens, metalloestrogens, heavy metal toxins, radioactive isotopes, all these different forms of estrogen-based issues. And testosterone derivatives and androgens like this are one of the best things to help us with that. So it's just kind of an interesting way to think about how, on one level, the pine's being attacked. On another level, we're being attacked. Both of us need that pollen in order to nourish and bring back a higher level of function. Now in Chinese medicine, pine pollen has been used for over 3,000 years to increase sexual vigor, vitality, and to enhance longevity. So there's only a few plants that do this, including things like the ginsengs and the cordyceps and some of these more famous ones. By adding androgens like this into the body as we age, it increases the vigor and vitality and gives us more bioavailable testosterone as ours starts to decline. For people under 20 or in their, in their 20s, this is not the right herb, but as you get into your 30s, this can be a better herb for you. And as you get into your 60s, this might be one of the best herbs for you. Oh. Now how do we use this pollen? It's so abundant and quite flavorful. Mmm. In fact, as I tried, I can taste a little bit of a sweet flavor to that. It's very nutrient dense. So once we've picked ourselves a bowl full of pine pollen, how are we gonna process this? What are we gonna do with it? Well, I'm gonna let this dry out, and then what I've been doing is I'll put it through a series of screens where I'll sift off this first bit and we'll pull out all the big heavy stuff, and then we'll put it through a finer screen and sift off the finer stuff so we have just the pollen left. As a pollen, just like this, it's quite safe to take for everyone. Those bioavailable androgens are not as bioavailable. In order to make them bioavailable, we have to make a tincture. This is a way of extracting that and bringing it into a solution that'll pass our GI tract and get right into the blood quickly. That's what tinctures do. They help bypass our need to digest the medicine and drive it deeper into the system quick and efficiently. In order to make a tincture with pine pollen, we want to do what's called a one to five, which means one gram of pollen to five milliliters of liquid. We want to use alcohol for this because that's the best way to extract it. And we're going to use 70% alcohol. If we use 50 or 40%, we're going to get an extract, but not quite as strong. So we use the high proof alcohol to pull out all those steroidal building blocks. Two to three droppers full held in the mouth for 30 seconds is one of the best ways to absorb the pine pollen tincture. And that way we can pull out all those androgens and steroidal building blocks to boost up the testosterone and give more vigor and drive. Now that is what we call abundance. Look at that. One more time. Warm pollen. Suck that up. Wow. Oh yeah. Whoa. Even just hanging out with this stuff, I feel stronger already. All right. Woohoo. Let's go. <laughs> Now this one is an awesome type of tree. You see how different those are from these kind that we have? Quite a bit larger and quite a bit fatter. Now these ones aren't quite ready yet, but I bet if we look on the other side, the south side of this tree, we might find some that are. We have these big fat heads that are full of pollen. 
Some of them aren't quite ready yet, but these ones that are, are gonna produce a ton of good pollen. You know what my favorite thing to do with pine pollen has been? The last two years in a row, I've been making pine pollen beer. Wow, now that is good. Now, my theory on this is that if the alcohol helps bring out some of those bioavailable androgens, I think fermentation would do an even better job of slowly maturing them and making them that much more potent. So we call this berserker beer. And actually, if you look back in history and we see hops, which is what's used to make beer, was one of the very first plants to ever be standardized. The Romans went, wait a minute, we can't have no crazy beers where people are getting wild. We need a sedative beer. And so they standardized the Roman Catholic Church hops to be the only major ingredient for beer. And other ones like pine pollen were outlawed. Nowadays, as we have the ability to do what we want, a little more freedom, we can start to experiment again and make things like pine pollen beer. I'll personally recommend two years in a row I've made this and it is awesome. This last year I used nettle root and vanilla, had a great, great flavor, but I've also added it to burdock and I've added it to astragalus and other kind of androgen building herbs too. It is only a short window of time, but it's one of the most potent nutrient foods we have. So enjoy it, get it into your body and make it a spring tonic cleanser. Thanks for joining me. I'm Yara Willard and this has been Pine Pollen. Woohoo! Go! Thanks for checking out our video today. I hope you learned a little bit about pine pollen. This is one of my favorite herbs, super nutrient dense, amazing spring tonic food that's available for two weeks a year and it's just abundant like crazy. So get out, find it, enjoy it. Check out the other video I did on pine pollen a few years back as well as some of our other videos that have lots to share more about herbs. Thanks for joining the herbal community and we'll see you again soon.